Brady and Gaz in for LeVac on 104 5 the team on this Monday. LeVac uh, sunning himself in Disney. So we are here in the studio and we are on the phone now with you Albany Great Danes broadcaster Zach By. Zach, you were in Syracuse yesterday as the Great Danes women's basketball season comes to an end. Danes lose by 17. What exactly happened to you, Albany, yesterday? Uh, I think Albany got overwhelmed by the length and athleticism of Syracuse. I mean, the, the, the full court press from the Orange uh, was as legitimate as anything that I've seen with my own eyes uh, in, in the years calling women's college basketball uh, on top of the men's schedule. It was it was uh, it was daunting for those guys to even get over half court, uh, let alone score on the Syracuse defense. Once they did get it, get it over half court, and that turned into basically the challenge of the game was not turning the basketball over in the back court and beating the ten second violation. And Syracuse is just so long and so athletic, uh, even even more so than Florida, who they played forty eight hours before. Uh, it was unlike anything they had seen this season. Uh, Syracuse is a really, really good team, uh, you know, a 28-win team um, out of one of the best conferences in college basketball, and they and they played like it. And, and Albany just uh, didn't have the horses to keep up uh, with, with Syracuse. Amani Tate had 28 points in the upset win over Florida on Friday. She really, really struggled yesterday, Zach. And for people who only started watching this team in the NCAA tournament, yesterday's game really did the year she had a disservice, right? There's, there's no doubt about it. And that's, that's pretty well said, uh, Brady, because she was you know, dynamite through the regular season, first team all conference, uh, and then she, you know, put the entire program, uh, and you could even say the program's history on her shoulders during that fourth quarter of the first round. Albany would never have played yesterday, uh, against a top 20 Syracuse team had it not been for Monty T. And, uh, but that being said, you know, in that contest yesterday, she struggled mightily and, uh, just, I think it was, it was two of ten from the field, uh, had double digit turnovers, uh, and that's really what what Albany was missing um, was her production offensively. And and I know you know in in sports you don't just plug in an equation like if X equals Y, but they lost by seven to seventeen points, and uh, Amani Tate averages uh, about eighteen points a game, a little over eighteen points a game. That that was the gap and the difference. I mean, uh, Albany uh, needed to play over their heads. Uh, to be in a you know couple possession game down the stretch with Syracuse, uh, and the reason that they didn't is because uh, Amani Tate played well below uh, the expectations that she basically set forth for herself, um, and uh, and and that was uh, one of one of the uh, the differences between the two teams and why the score. Uh, was was lopsided in that seventeen point loss. We had Bob Wachusen on with us a little bit earlier. He was doing the game for the ESPN television broadcast, and he brought up a point that almost like football was talked about closing speed. You played basketball, Brady played baseball, I played football. Where you move up to another level, and that shot you thought might have been open, all of a sudden you see it, and somebody's in your face, or you go for that bounce pass that during your conference play is a point for your team, but all of a sudden somebody's hands out there. Was it something that small that might have affected Monty Tate and Sharisha Richards where those plays they made in conference play, all of a sudden with Syracuse, they're not there anymore because of the recovery speed? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, for, for, for 100% certainty, that, that was definitely uh, an issue for Albany. And they had uh, very little time or space to do much of anything uh, for both uh, for uh, Monty Tate and Sharisha Richards as well. I mean, Richards ends up with 24 points and 14 rebounds, which is uh, – and a great stat line for someone who's being double teamed and, and going against that length. But but to your point, every one of uh, those 24 points from Richards or uh, in, in the very couple points that Amani Tate put up, they were so hard. Everything was difficult there. There was very rarely, uh, maybe one per half for Albany, where they got an easy basket. Everything is a grind. And, you know, that's just not the case uh, with the day-in, day-out competition that Albany is used to playing. Um, you know, against, you know, Hartford or even a great team like Maine in their conference, you know, you can get away with at points during the game being more dominant physically and being better athletes as Amani Tate and Teresa Richards are comparatively speaking to their league. And now you jump up and it's almost like a shock value. You go from zero to a hundred, you know, Teresa Richards and, and Tate are trying to finish over Brianna, uh, and, and Bria Day, who are twin sisters, both go six foot four. Absolutely won the women's basketball genetic lottery. <laughs> and they're just, you're just swatting shots and flying all over the court and pressuring full court as well. You know, so 
it was it was it was a it was a chore uh, for Albany just to get a clean look. And once they got the clean look, you, you then have to make it. Uh, and 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 the opportunities for those were just few and far between. 104.5 The Team, 104.5thetheam.com. Brady and Gaz in for LeVac today. Producer Mariano's here as well. We've got Zach By, Great Danes broadcaster, with us on the phone. So, Zach, we've been spoiled here as you Albany supporters. Five straight trips to the tournament for the Dane ladies. Three out of four now for the U Albany men. Both teams are going to lose a lot. Tell me there's still reason for optimism on both sides. Well, uh, we'll start with the women since they, they just finished their season yesterday. I mean, Albany, who has just won uh, five consecutive conference championships, the most on the men's or the women's side ever. I mean, it's a legit, it's the definition of a mid-major dynasty. Um, they're going to lose Sharice Richards and Aaron Coughlin. Sharice Richards, I mean, uh, just scored 2,440 points over the last four seasons. And then her, and then her uh, classmate, uh, Coughlin, made uh, almost 153. She's top five in, in UAlbany history. So that being said, they're going to bring back the preseason player of the year uh, this coming season. It's going to be Amani Tate. It's like a shoe-in. It's going to be a unanimous vote. She's going to become the best player in the league. And at the same time, you're going to bring back Tiana Joe Carter and Cassandra Edwards, uh, two players uh, from the front court that play an awful lot. And then you have this young freshman named Heather Forster, who had a terrific second quarter uh, yesterday against Syracuse and really was the reason that Albany was in a seven-point game at the halftime with Syracuse because Heather Forster, the freshman, came in and left her you know, DNA all over the second quarter. Um, and she's the younger sister of one of the all-time leading rebounders, Julie Forster, who won the very first U Albany championship uh, five years ago. So that's her younger sister. So they, they have a lot coming back. They're going to be picked to win the league. And I'd be surprised if someone in the American East stops them from cutting down the nets for a sixth straight year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the men's side, I think it starts uh, with, with uh, the front court of Mike Rowley and Greg Steyer, who are both multiple-year starters uh, and very much improved this past season. And then really the, the cornerstone moving forward, Joe Cremo, uh, the, the, the freshman out of Scotia Glenville, uh, who was uh, rookie of the year in the league and simultaneously sixth man of the league. Average double figures in just 21 minutes of basketball per night. As far as an efficiency rating, he was number two in the entire conference the time behind the uh, uh, NBA prospect Jamil Warney. Um, he, there's a lot of reasons uh, that you could you know size up Albany a year from now and say, wow, okay, they bring back their starting front court. You had the stud freshman coming in. Dallas Cinema, who started 16 games last year and was very productive down the stretch this year, comes back. Richard Peters, the backup center, comes back. Uh, and from what I'm hearing, they have a couple names in the recruiting uh, hopper, if you will. And if they can get two of the three kids that they that they think they have on the hook, uh, Albany will be competing for a championship again next season. I, I'd be I'd be uh, very surprised if they weren't at that 20 win mark uh, in in 2016-17. Uh, again, it would be for about a fifth straight season. Zach By, you always broadcaster with us, 104.5 The Team, 104.5theteam.com. Brady and Gaz here. Zach, we're going to go off the rails. Gaz and I have been having this argument, and you'll have a unique perspective on it. So Stony Brook basketball coach Steve Peichel goes to Rutgers. And my thought process is, why in the world would you leave Stony Brook, a place where you're revered, have gotten to the tournament, won conference championships, you... Yeah, they'll probably name the gym after you somewhere down the line. You've got a chance to win that league every year versus going to Rutgers, a place with no history, no tradition, and you're in one of the best conferences in the country. In my mind, you have zero chance to win. I think it's the wrong move. God says anytime you get a chance to get promoted, it's worth the shot. What say you, Zach, by? <laughs> well, it's a very interesting argument, and I, I like that you guys are having it. That's pretty funny. Um, well, I, I have an idea that I could provide a little bit of insight in why Steve Peichel moved on. It starts with $8 million over five years, <laughs> all right? That's, that's no longer Stony Brook money. That's, you know, that's Big Ten money. Uh, and and I'm, I, I see the advantages that you're talking about, Brady. You have an opportunity to win the league, uh, you know, every other year. They just built a, this $19 million arena that they play in, which is gorgeous. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to, to, to recruit that area well uh, at the mid-major level. Uh, but at the same time, if you can line up benches across guys like Tom Izzo uh, and, and Tom Cream, guys like that, you know, you're putting yourself in a different class. And, and, and no one's saying 
that you have to go and win a game in the NCAA tournament. If you can show signs of progression with Rutgers and you can elevate them to maybe, you know, a 17-win season, uh, you're going to raise a bunch of eyebrows, and then the conversation says, wow, he brought Stony Brook to the, to, the, to the tournament. Now he's kind of turning around Rutgers. Maybe this is a guy that is, you know, a, a legitimate guy for, for the next level job. So, you know, it, it's an interesting conversation. Uh, w- one that I think is, is more, uh, even more interesting is uh, how he ends up at Rutgers in the first place. I mean, this was a guy that I thought was going to be on the hot seat if he didn't get to the NCAA tournament this year, having player of the year for five consecutive years in the American East Conference uh, and never you know, getting to the tournament till now uh, and, and underperforming um, and, and, then, and then jumping from the American East to the Big Ten. That's almost unprecedented. Uh, and it's just it's, it's very interesting how things shook, uh, shook out. Um, it's, 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 uh, like I said, unprecedented America East the big 10. You never hear that ever. Zach, how's your bracket doing? Is it totally busted like mine? Yeah, there it's, it's been in the can <laughs> for a couple days now. So ever I'm, since. I'm, I'm, I'm with the rest of America right now. I'm kind of rooting for, uh, rooting for my wife's bracket, unfortunately. There you go. One four five the team, one four five the team.com on the phone. Zach by great Danes broadcaster was in Syracuse yesterday for the women's game. They lose to Syracuse. Zach, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Rock it.